yesterday we choose to do the dissection and the diagnosis on the left side. So today, the right side, which is always the side which is a little bit trickier because of the angulation. So with a 30 degree lens, I'm moving through the vestibule of the nose, approaching the middle meatus, just to get an idea where we are, identify the insertion of the middle turbinate. Above that little darker area is where we had some post-mortem changes. There was an old blood clot. I'm now going to the floor of the nose, identify the inferior turbinate, and there we are. And I slide along the floor of the nose now, here passing a small septal spur and going all the way back into the nasopharynx. We have arrived at the eustachium. We just can see from 11 o'clock into our picture the posterior end of the inferior turbinate. And if I rotate my 30-degree lens now a little bit laterally, we can have a direct view onto the eustachian tube. And if that were a real patient, you would ask him to swallow now, and you could nicely examine the um, functioning of the eustachian tube. Just to show you that if you're on one side, if you manage to pass on one side into the nasopharynx by simply rotating the scope along its longitudinal axis, you can see here very nicely the eustachian tube on the other side of the patient. I hope you can see that on the monitor. So up there at 2 o'clock, you now have the eustachian tube of the other side, and you can evaluate the entire nasopharynx, and here would be the area where we had the adenoids. And now back again with our endoscope, just by rotation, here we see the eustachian tube on the right side of the patient. I reposition my endoscope now and go back the same way we went in along the floor, inferior turbinate, septal spur, and there we have the insertion of the inferior turbinate. So our next pass once again goes into the nose, approaching the middle meatus, but not diving into the middle meatus, but just trying to bypass the middle turbinate or go a little bit underneath the middle turbinate. And you can see the superior turbinate already very clearly outlined up there. And now I go again to the area of the coena and go up into the sphenoethmoidal recess. There we are, the area of the sphenoethmoidal recess. And I try to swing up here and go higher up until we can identify the sphenoid sinus ostium. And there we are looking onto the sphenoid ostium. We have a small bridge of mucus, which again I will try to bypass. And behind that bridge of mucus, we see the sphenoid sinus ostium, right up there. The problem is, but I hope you can see that. That now is superior turbinate. And if I look a little bit laterally, which means underneath that superior turbinate, here you can see the opening of a posterior ethmoidal cell draining into the superior meatus. And to the right of that superior turbinate, once again, the way up into the sphenoid sinus. I retract my scope now again, and we go out of the nose again. All these steps so far have been done using a 30-degree lens. And we will stay with the 30-degree lens and now do our third pass, which will take us closer to the middle meatus. So approaching the middle meatus, and you can see that seen from anteriorly, can I have the delicate spoon to point out, please? From anteriorly, the middle meatus is relatively narrow, and you cannot distinguish too many of its features. But by simply shifting medially a little bit that middle turbinate, not that much that it breaks, you can clearly see now the posterior free margin of the uncinate process coming up here along the tip of my instrument. You see the ethmoidal bulla a little bit behind. And if I push the middle turbinate a little bit wider, uh, medially, you now have nicely the structures. From 7 o'clock to almost 12 o'clock, you see the posterior free margin of the uncinate process. The center of the picture is dominated by the ethmoidal bulla. And if I try to go a little bit medially to the ethmoidal bulla, we're coming to a small cleft. It looks like an opening, which is nothing else 
but the way through the so-called hiatus semilunaris superioris into the lateral sinus. And if we're lucky in the lateral sinus, we might be able to see the anterior ethmoidal artery. I'm approaching a little bit more, and there we clearly can see our artery swing across the roof of the ethmoid in a small bony canal. Uh, can we hold it for a second? You see the anterior ethmoidal artery swinging across its, its bony canal. And there we go back. There we have the ethmoidal bulla. There is our middle turbinate. This is the uncinate process. If I touch that here, you have the uncinate process. And if I retract it a little bit, you see nicely the outlines of the hiatus semilunaris. And you s note, please, that you do not see anything like a maxillary sinus ostium. If that small curved spoon now is inserted through the hiatus semilunaris, it dives into the ethmoidal infundibulum. You see it disappear. You can see it disappear here behind and all that hiatus semilunaris leads us up. So be between the uncinate and the ethmoidal bulla, through the hiatus, we go into the ethmoidal infundibulum. The maxillary sinus ostium would be located somewhere down here. We will demonstrate that a little bit later. So let's orient ourselves again. Insertion of the turbinate, and we dive underneath that now. We have the uncinate process here. We have the superior insertion of the ethmoidal bulla. We have the way through the hiatus semilunaris superiors into the lateral sinus, where my instrument disappears now. At the roof of that lateral sinus, we have identified the anterior ethmoidal artery. So let's see whether we can get a better look into that area up to the frontal recess. And in this case, it is not possible. We will do so during the dissection. We just can get a glimpse, but I'm not able to tell you whether what we see now is the way into the frontal sinus or whether this is just another blind of one of the ethmoidal cells. So we'll go back and we return our middle turbinate again. I will demonstrate now the other possibility of how to dive in the middle meatus, which is, as the middle meatus is wider posteriorly, you go to the posterior end or near the posterior end of that turbinate and then rotate your way underneath the turbinate, slip underneath the turbinate, and now you're in the middle meatus, looking straight onto the ground lamella, and you investigate from the back to the front. So I retract the scope very slowly, and now you see the bulla emerge. You have the well-known structure of the uncinate. And if I go up now, this will lead us to the frontal recess, where we could not identify further structures. Once again, medial to the bulla, through the cleft they called the sinus of the turbinate, between the bulla and the middle turbinate, we approach that opening, the hiatus semilunaris superiors, going into the lateral sinus, and there we can see the anterior ethmoidal artery in its bony canal swinging across. So I will remove that scope now and will perform a diagnostic maxillary sinoscopy for which I will use uh, the trocar sheath. And could you please, or that will not fall off, and perform a maxillary sinoscopy, mind that camera for the external. So I go in between the roots of number three and four, well laterally after palpating the infraorbital canal and stay lateral and inferior to that and now rotate the trocar through. That was a little breakthrough which should not happen in a real patient. Always be prepared to stop. Retract the trocar sleeve and now go in again with a still the 30 degree lens still is, and we will dive into 